Morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee in the Word. Hopefully, you got your coffee. Hopefully, you got your word. You're not talking to anybody. Nobody's there. This is live. It does, but nobody's there. Well, it doesn't matter if they're there or not. I'm starting. Yeah. I'm starting with or without you. With or without. You. You're over there. I'm over here. I'm starting with <laughs> or without you. <laughs> hey, everybody. Nobody's there. Hey, everybody. Hopefully, some people jump on the line here with us a little bit in a minute. And, uh, we're a little bit behind schedule. Uh, always seems like we're trying to work the bugs out of some systems and get cords and everything else and anyway it's uh, par for the course but uh, it's good to uh, to see everybody that's coming on and will be coming on with us today as Jerry's corrected me uh, but anyway <laughs> hopefully you got your coffee hopefully you got your word most importantly that you got your word amen that's the main thing you can live without coffee. I know some of you don't think you can, but you can. But you cannot live without the Word. Amen. You got to have the Word. So we'll wait a few. Everybody comes online with us here this morning. Uh, trying to get everybody in with us. And... Uh, we got a few announcements to get out of the way, and then we'll do some prayer requests, and we'll pray, and we'll get into this this lesson. Uh, the more you think about this topic, and the more you think about this subject, uh, we understand. Jerry's with us. He's out doing some technical things, uh, but he's trying to get the camera straight. Sometimes uh, things just get done wrong, or get bumped, or moved, anyway, but... Um, well, again, welcome everybody to Coffee in the Word, and uh, hopefully you're having a good morning so far. Hopefully everything's going good, and the Lord's blessing and moving. Amen. We got up this morning. We're getting more and more computers, more and more things, seems like. And they're giving this all to a low-tech man, a high-tech world, but, uh, but anyway, good morning. Uh, we'll, we'll jump into a few little quick announcements. Do not forget service tonight at 7 o'clock. Be here. My goodness, the Lord has been moving. Messages have been great. Worship's been powerful. So uh, you don't want to miss out. Amen. Was that powerful worship and dynamic preaching? Is that how that goes? And uh, yes, sir. so, uh, <coughs> excuse me. So let's remember that tonight. Uh, don't forget also tonight, there will be no God's Amazing Girls pre-service meeting tonight. Now they'll pick back up the 25th of August, or their next meeting will be the 25th of August. So remember that, girls, young ladies, and uh, pass the word around, spread the word around this morning. Also, our New Day Cancer Support Group meets tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. in the Family Life Center room 107. That's in the basement area. Uh, if you if you're uh, if you've had cancer, if you any any in your family's had cancer, it's a good support group uh, to come to. Also, the Iron Men's meeting. I lost my place. Iron Men's ministry meeting will be this Friday, not Thursday, but will be this Friday. The guys are leaving the church at 5 p.m. to go to the Rogersville Racetrack for the test and tune. Starts at 6 o'clock. Admission's $10. Contact Roger Thornburg for more details. So if you're a gearhead or if you just want to go hang out with the guys and, and, and hear some good, powerful motors running around, it's, it's a fun little time. So uh, please come out and be with us. Um, also, this coming Sunday, August the 22nd, we're having a baptismal service at Cherokee Dam. Directly after the 1030 service, please register on the Church Center app on the website or contact somebody and let them know you're going to be baptized, wanting to be baptized. Uh, we, have, we must have at least three to have signed up to, well, was, for your information, we have three that have signed up already. Okay, we've got three that's ready to be baptized. Praise Amen. the Lord. That's a good yeah. deal. Uh, I'm reading this if you can't tell. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> But we've already got three, and hey, if you've been saved and you've rededicated your life and you have not been baptized, you need to. I'm just going to say that. Uh, Jesus did. If we do nothing else, we do it because we follow him. Amen. But it is a testimonial of, of, of what's happened to you, and it's also a testimonial of who you're following and who you put your faith in. 
So don't forget that. Also, Children's Church prayer night, Friday, August the 27th at 7 p.m. in the Family Life Center, room 200. Also, ladies, save this date, Saturday, September the 11th at 10.30 p.m. Sharon Bryant will be hosting a faith, beauty, and the Proverbs 31 woman's, women's, woman's seminar and brunch. They're having food. That's what brunch is. I wish we'd learn how to cook, man. Mm, I just I don't want to cook. I just want to eat. Yeah, well, hey. <laughs> Good law. Don't get technical. I mean. We can put you in a wig and dress and send yeah, you over we, there. We preach against that. <laughs> we ain't doing that. Yeah. I, ain't, I ain't doing that. But anyway, uh, 1030, September the 11th. Uh, uh Faith and Beauty and Proverbs 31 Woman Seminar and Brunch. You can sign up on Church Winter. Hang on just a second. She said that event. should be 10.30 a.m. Sorry about that. Oh, 10.30 a.m., not 10. Yeah, 10.30 p.m. That's pretty late. You can't have a brunch at night, can you? Yeah, brunch you is can. lunch and supper. Or breakfast <laughs> lunch. Thank you, Sister Melissa, keeping us straight there. <laughs> oh, well, I'm just reading. I don't know what I did. Okay. But anyway, let's remember that. Don't forget tonight's service. Seems like there's something else happening. What else is happening? Is that it covers a lot of it, doesn't it? Make sure we haven't missed nothing. It is a free event, by the way, ladies. You can sign up on the Church Center app or website or just let Sister Sharon know you're coming. And uh Okay, I was reading. But anyway, anything else we got? We're missing anything. Uh no, I was uh, I was commenting on uh, something that uh she said about it still being dark in here. We ordered some lights to uh, to brighten up our smiling faces. Uh, we uh, uh, appreciate everybody helping us out, letting us know what's going on. Uh, we ordered also a couple of more mics because we got some things going on with uh, you know with having more people in here. Uh, but uh, we we ordered actually some uh, some video lights where it's not going to be so bright in our faces and, and hopefully it'll help out with people seeing us uh, man, can you imagine people actually wanting to see us but anyway uh, no. we no I, I can't either um, we're, we're uh, working on some uh, more technical stuff the more I learn uh, from you know reading this stuff and, and getting to uh, to see some of the uh, uh, the things that's uh, uh, on the internet we're, we're trying to make uh, things better uh, to help deliver the word to you guys. So thank you for all the comments and, and everything. It, it makes uh, this a little bit more uh, enjoyable to do, and it makes it a little bit more easier for you guys to uh, to get the word. Uh, so thank you for all the comments and stuff. I want to make sure I got that, that out there to you. So thank you. Um, uh, the third one down there uh, where it says 1.36 a.m., that's the next one. I don't know what you're looking at. Over, there, Over here? Yeah, where it says uh, prayer request. Over here? Yeah. Oh. Now how do I go back to where I was at? Go back up. There we go. All right, good deal. Good deal. They're trying to high-tech me, and it ain't working very well. <laughs> But anyway, we uh, we appreciate er everything that uh, that you guys do as far as keeping us uh, on track. Um, we uh, we got some prayer requests. Uh, did, did you start on them? Yet? No, okay. Uh, Bree Coleman says, uh, "Pray for her family. Her papa has passed away. Uh, uh, this was uh, yesterday. Um, uh, lift that family up." Carrie uh, Hicks, uh, pray for her grandson. Ezekiel, he's home from the hospital. Seen a little picture of that little, mm -hmm. little rascal yesterday. Cute, 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 cute. Uh, but still struggling with the uh, RSV. Um, for all you uh, grandparents and parents that's going around, uh, just just to let you know for people that wants to hold uh, the babies, uh, be, we'll be a little yeah. uh, uh, you know overprotective right now. Uh, also pray for his mama. She is uh, tired and, and uh, worried, uh, probably a little worn out. Uh, and your your aunt Susie. Yeah, she's not been doing too good. Just be praying for her. She uh, they don't know what's wrong with her. She don't know if she's got bronchitis or what she's got. She went to I think she went to the doctor yesterday. Maybe I don't know. She's supposed to go to the doctor sometime. She's oh she's in her 80s. So yeah. be praying for her. Um, 
Brittany Buckner's stepbrother not saved and is in the CCU in Newport not doing well, mm -hmm. has sepsis, and it, his organs are shutting down. Wow. Uh, let's lift him up in, in the, the prayers this morning. Um, Betty Hickney, H Hickey, excuse me. Uh, Hickney. Man, hey, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm reading the same thing as I can help it. Hey, just wait. Go yes. ahead. One day you'll get as old as you. <coughs> One day I'll get as old as you. <laughs> your eyes will start going to. Uh, pray for her sister, uh, Bobby Warren, uh, has COVID. Her six-year-old son is sick. Uh, pray that uh, her two-year-old doesn't get it. Um, yes, ma'am, amen. We, we will definitely be praying for that. Uh, Angie Crane, pray that her grandson, Cameron, uh, pray for her, her grandson, Cameron. He has COVID and pray for his grandmother who is elderly and uh, has it as well. Um, you know, we, we've got uh, many people that, uh, uh, that's in this community right now that doesn't have the COVID but has uh, other things right now that, uh, uh, like uh, bronchitis and uh, some other things that's going around in this area. The crud. Uh, yeah, the crud. We call it the crud here in Tennessee. Uh, we, we need to make... Uh, you need to turn your mic up a little bit. Uh, I think it fell off. Fell off, sister. He's knocked it off. I gotta forget one time I was by myself, I think, and I was getting excited sometimes preaching and teaching. I slapped man, slapped my mark and it hit the floor. It was the funniest thing I think I'd ever seen. But that's good. But yeah, let's remember those prayer requests as he gets adjusted there. Um let's remember all that. Hey, thanks guys, all you that are jumping on with us this morning. Um uh, so uh, if you do have prayer requests, please send it in. We'll make sure we get it to our prayer teams. Uh, we'll, we'd love to pray for you guys and pray for whatever's going on. Remember service tonight. Remember our pastor tonight as he brings forth the word. Uh, remember my family. We've got some things going on, and just uh, we need the Lord to direction and guidance and movements and all that good stuff. We just, we just, we just need him to show up, I guess, is the best way to put it. So, Amen. Uh, remember that. Um, Remember our lost loved ones, all those that don't know the Lord, that they come to know the Lord, because I believe the Lord's about to wrap this thing up. We're getting closer and closer to the end, I believe, and uh, we want all our family and friends and loved ones and those that we can even come in contact with to go with us, amen. So. Hey, I, I don't know if you guys have heard or not, but uh, you know all this stuff that's going on in Afghanistan, uh, we have not <clears throat> heard mention of this in the news uh, but we have got a lot of missionaries over there, uh, and we need to lift them up in prayer because a lot of them are stuck, and a lot of people don't even know that they're there. Uh, we need to definitely lift them up in prayer. Um, you know, the first thing that people think of whenever they start talking about uh, uh, Afghanistan is the soldiers, and, and, and we need to pray for them. We, we need to pray for the safe return, and we need to pray for all the people that are lost and, and, and everything that's over there. But the first thing that happens whenever the, those folks that are, that are over there is we, we think that if they get caught, with a Bible or, or a scripture or, or if they get caught talking about Jesus Christ, they, they get killed. So we need to think about every single one of those uh, missionaries that are in, in that region over there. Uh, they, they're in harm's way. Uh, they would save a soldier and kill a Christian in a heartbeat. So we need to be thinking about them and Definitely praying the for them. Christians that are in Afghanistan themselves that's become Christians. Yeah, absolutely remember that. Is today the 18th? Yes, sir. Well, just a little quick shout out before we go too far. Barbara and Lester's anniversary is today. Oh, Yeah, I just hallelujah. got a thing that showed some pictures of, of their wedding and all that. So let's remember them today, pray for them, and help them, and celebrate with them, I guess you could say. Yeah, my, my twin. Lester's my twin. Yeah. I thought she was about his age. He's almost yeah. 80 now. Yeah. But anyway, let's move on. But do remember Afghanistan. Remember the Christians. Remember the missionaries that are over there. Lord have mercy. Remember our leader, our country. My oh, goodness, I don't know what else to say about that. We we'll just leave that alone. So we get into our lesson. But Amen. Um, and if you got a prayer request, I think we, is that all we got? Uh, as far as I I, I seen here, but uh, the last one that I got uh, yesterday uh, was uh, Donnie Moore. Oh yeah, uh, we need to remember him. He's still struggling with uh, uh, with his uh, kidney, yeah. and uh, we need to just 
continue to lift him up in prayer. Right. Let's remember him. He's uh, he's on the trying to get on transplant list, or already is on one. So uh, he's already had one transplant. That kidney lasts him twenty plus years, I think. But he needs another, and he's on dialysis two or three times a week. And so let's remember him. Amen. All right, then let's pray. Let's invite the Lord into this class and into this lesson. You want to pray? You want me to? I got you covered, bro. All right, go ahead. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for such a glorious day, dear Heavenly Father. We ask you, dear Lord, to keep everyone safe and protected for all, from all this rain, dear Heavenly Father. We know that you sent it. We must have needed it, dear Heavenly Father. But keep everyone safe, dear Heavenly Father. We ask you, dear Lord, for all of these prayer requests. Put your healing touches on every single one of them, dear Heavenly Father. The ones that we did not get to, dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to cover them in the blood of your Son, dear Heavenly Father. We ask you, dear Heavenly Father, to go with each and every single one of the ministers, dear Heavenly Father, that is out there, dear Lord. Help them bring in the multitudes, dear Heavenly Father, for all of the lost, dear Heavenly Father. We ask you to open up their ears, dear Heavenly Father, to hear your word, dear Lord. We ask you, dear Lord, to bring them in, dear Heavenly Father, to open up their hearts, dear Heavenly Father. We know, dear Heavenly Father, that your word, dear Heavenly Father, can save them, dear Heavenly Father. The ones that are lost, dear Heavenly Father, the ones that are, are taking in the drugs and the alcohol, dear Heavenly Father, the ones that, that cannot stay at home at night, Dear Heavenly Father, the ones that are, are abandoning their families, dear Lord, we ask you, dear Heavenly Father, to let them hear everything that we are trying to get to them, dear Heavenly Father. There's a better life out there for everyone, dear Heavenly Father, and it's through you. Yes. We ask you, dear Lord, to help each and every single person that's listening to our voices today, dear Heavenly Father, to, when they get done, dear Heavenly Father, just to walk out their house and just, just talk one sentence of your word and it will make a difference. I feel that in my bones today, dear Heavenly Father. We ask you, dear Lord, to, little yes, Donnie Jesus. Moore, dear Heavenly yes, Father, Jesus. touch his his kidneys, dear Heavenly Father, that he doesn't even need another transplant, that, that your healing touches can, that can just dry up every single cell in his body that is impure and make him whole again, dear Heavenly Father. We ask that this COVID thing just be eradicated out of this world, dear Heavenly Father. We know that you can do it, dear Heavenly Father. Oh, Lord. It's, uh, we ask you, dear Lord, that all the services that are going on in this country today, dear Heavenly Father, that's, that, that the doors just bust wide open. Not a church be closed today, dear Heavenly Father. They, a, ask you, dear Heavenly Father, that every single person that has fear in their life, that you walk in and take it away from them because devils is not allowed in your homes. And we know that this body is your home, dear Heavenly Father. I ask you in your son's holy name that everybody stand to their feet right now and shout amen, amen, amen. Oh, in your son's holy name, amen. Amen, amen. Praise yes, the Lord. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Ooh. Again, welcome to Coffee in the Word in the morning. Like we always say, hopefully you got your coffee. And most importantly, you got your word. Amen. You can live without coffee. I know some Christians don't think you can, but you can. I try not to. <laughs> but you cannot live without the word of the living God. Amen. Mm. Mm -mm. If you got your Bibles, turn to Psalms 55. We're going to start there with verse 12. We'll go to verse 14. We are going back into part two of offenses and forgiveness. Uh, we we kind of jumped into a little bit of this yesterday. and We really feel led to uh, really div dig a little deeper into it because offenses are some of the things that, let, let's just say it this way. There's a book. What's the book called? Uh, Beta Satan. If Beta you, Satan. You ought to read it. We may do use a little bit of that throughout this series because it's one of the the biggest traps that the devil lays is offenses, and and it's easily to be offended sometimes. I mean, it is. People hurt you. People hurt your feelings. People park in your parking place. People sit in your seat. People pull for Alabama. I mean, you, there's all kinds of things that can hurt a man's feelings. Uh, but, but anyway, it started already. Uh, yeah, and some people are real sensitive anyway. So. <clears throat> Somewhere in the back of my mind right now, I hear Michael Buffer saying, let's get ready to rumble. I don't know who Michael, <laughs> I, I don't know who Michael Buffer is. <laughs> so, but anyway. Oh, my goodness. Somebody Michael, help me. Who's Michael Buffer? He's the guy that's in the boxing rings. He's the one oh, that gets okay. everybody yeah, yeah, started. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. 
you, you you really live a sheltered life, you know. I don't watch it. I don't watch a lot of. Well, I didn't know who he was. I, mean, I like boxing. But I didn't know he was the guy. Oh my but anyway, goodness. we'll move home. But offenses sometimes can really come, and it's a trap of the enemy to stop you from serving God to your full potential and stop you from doing what God's called you to do. It has hindered a lot of people. You meet a lot of people out in, in the world today, and they were in church at one time, but they won't go back because they've been hurt so bad. And it was a trap of the enemy to get them out. And uh, Psalms 55 and 12, and we'll look at this passage of Scripture and, and kind of look at it a little bit this morning. Uh, we jumped into a lot of it yesterday, but we, we, the Bible does teach us this way. We should not be so easily offended. Come on, Christians. We got to have a little, uh, uh, help me. We got to have a little smarts. Let's just be real. We, we got, the Bible tells us we're to be harmless as doves and wise as serpents. We need to understand when the enemy's attacks are and what they try to do. It says we ought to know his schemes. We ought to know his wiles. We ought to be prepared that he's going to attack us. And this is one of his biggest traps that he sets for people because it's easy for us to get hurt. But here's what David says. David says, for it was not an enemy that reproached me. <laughs> he said, I could have borne it. He said, then I could have borne it. What he's saying is if it was the enemy, I could have handled it. If it was somebody I know that didn't like me, or if it was somebody that was my enemy, he said, I understand that. I could have handled that. I could handle it because that's what he's supposed to do. He said, neither was it he that hated me. That didn't magnify himself against me. If there's somebody that hates you or somebody that's already against you and somebody that's an enemy in your life, he said, then I would have hid myself from him. He, he said, I would, have, I would have understood that. I wouldn't have took no offense in that. But it was thou, he said, a man mine equal, my God, mine acquaintance. He said, we took sweet counsel together. He said, we walked in the house of, in the house of God and company. What he was saying was it was somebody close to him. It was somebody who took, they sat around and talked and had fellowship together. It was somebody who went to the house of God with him. And, and, and I like this little series we're going to jump into, and we're going to use some of that book. So if you ever have not read that book, we may not use it all, but it's called The Bait of Satan. John Brevere writes it, I believe. That's is right. Correct. He's the author. And it's one of the biggest traps of the enemy is offenses. It's one of the biggest traps to suck you in and pull you out of where God wants you to be. And here we, we understand this. I hit the wrong button. Here we understand this, that offenses do come. How many know that? Jesus said to himself, he said, they're coming. They are coming. I can't find what I want to look for. There we go. They are coming. But it is one of the biggest traps that we use, that's used by the enemy. And it hinders us from being fully, using our full potential in Christ. Because we get mad, we get upset, we get our feelings hurt. Hey, people leave church. Let's be real. People step down from ministries. Let's be real. Because somebody, and a lot of times it's a misunderstanding. A lot of times it's a, it's a uh, even if it is a direct offense, the fact of the matter is, is the Bible teaches us that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, spiritual wickedness, and high places. Most of y'all know that scripture. But the enemy is using that to trap you to keep you fulfilled in what God wants you. He uses that to get people out of churches that God sent them to. That's he right. uses that to run people away from church and never darken the doors again. The enemy, it's a big trap. And, and that's the key is, is, is the word offenses, I believe. If, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's what it, it really deals in is uh, the word itself means a trap. I'm trying to find it. The Greek word offended in Luke 17 and 1 comes from the word skanda alona. This word originally referred to the part of the trap to which the bait was attached. Hence the word signifying laying a trap in someone's way. In the New Testament, it often describes an entrapment used by the enemy. Offense is a tool of the devil to bring people into captivity. Paul instructed, well, we'll get into that a little bit. Well, Paul instructed young Timothy this. He said in 2 Timothy 2, 24 and 26, he said, a servant of the Lord must, be, must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and they may come to their senses and escape the snare, the entrapment of the devil, having been taken captive by him, which do his will. If you're, if you're falling into that trap, then you've been trapped. Uh, anybody ever said a mouse trap? You ever lose a finger on the mouth? No, I'm just kidding. The most smack the modes that take your fingers out. But the fact of the matter here is we were setting an entrapment. We bait that thing 
something that the mouse likes. That's right. Try to get him. And the enemy is baiting that. That thing, that word offend, like I said, is part of the trap that the bait's laid on. And I think that was an important thing if we look at it, <clears throat> is that we got to get a hold and understand that that God... That's where you're at right oh, okay. Now. That God himself, or the devil, excuse me, the Lord, is, I didn't mean the God, the God has told us that offenses are coming. He said, they're coming. Be ready for them. It's a trap. Be ready for them. Don't be, don't be, don't worry if you call it. Don't worry that it happens. You ought to be shocked that it don't happen. That's right. Come on. You ought not be shocked that Jerry talked bad about me. I, he ought to be shocked that I pick on him every day about Alabama. I can't help it. Oh, well, I could help it, but I don't. But he ought not be, you know, he, he, you can't be so easily offended. And I know you think that's trivial things. But the fact of the matter is you can't let people offend you so easily. We have to, as Christians, to understand and recognize the traps that are coming. And the thing is, is we, the big thing is, is we, we think that it ought not come from where it comes from. But David says it come from those that was close to me. Those that were closest to me, he said, that's the ones that hurt my feelings. That's the one that offended me. The enemy's not going to hurt your feelings. Me and Jerry was talking the other day about this. People who work side by side with people <clears throat> in a plant, in a business, <clears throat> excuse me, and they can offend them all the time, and they'll still show up for work every day. But in church, people get offended so easily with, with their brothers and their sisters. And that's the key because we are close and we are family, and they ought not to act that way. And that's true, but the fact of the matter is sometimes people are human and people make mistakes and people say things that hurt people and people do things that, that offends people. Sometimes intentionally, 90% of the time I'd say unintentionally. Whether they're in leadership, whether they're just a member, whether they're whatever, they do it. But we have to as Christians to understand that that's a trap of the enemy who's trying to suck us in to the bitterness and the hatred and the anger that rails up in their hearts and drive you away from doing what you're supposed to be doing. You got anything? Anybody got any, com anybody got any comments out there? I don't have any yet. But, the, you know, you're, you're spot on with, with everything there. The, the problem with, with everything and, and what David was, was getting at is we are so protective of our heart. We, we allow it to get offended so easily. We do not allow anything to penetrate it after this starts. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in the, the, the following chapter, and we'll get into this, but I want to point this out so you, you don't think that you're alone in this, is everyone does this because the devil sits there and pokes at you. And he makes you feel like you're the only one in this. But what happens is, is whenever you start getting offended, the devil makes you think, oh, woe is me. And, and, and what David was talking about is you are so offended that you're all alone at this. My pastor did this to me. Uh, you know, the, the deacons did this to me. Uh, somebody parked in my parking spot. Somebody sat in my seat. The, the people at the front desk. My husband did this to me. My wife did this to me. I got so offended that it's not worth going to church or it's not worth going to Sunday school that you made it all about you and it's not all about you. It's all about you going and making it right with God to where you can ask for forgiveness for not doing what God asked you to do. The offense is what you need to be working on, not that person. There you go. That's right. And, and Misty Johnson wrote, posted this. I think it's good. She said, also, I think you have to shut the enemy down quickly. That's right. Shut his mouth. That's right. She said, if you feel like you have been offended, take it to the Lord first. That's the key. Ask to be filled with forgiveness and love for that person. Don't continue to play it over and over in your heart or tell others. Oh, my Lord. Thank you, sister. Had a preach right there all day long. Don't tell it in amongst your circle. Don't come to me and tell me that Jerry hurt your feelings and tell me why and all that stuff. I know as a pastor you have to, but you shouldn't do it. You, you should be able to come to us, but you shouldn't be going to your, 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 your prayer partner. You shouldn't be going to the person that sits beside you in the, in the pews. That's something you, you need to keep to yourself because if you begin to tell people, and I like what you said, don't play it over and over in your mind. Man. Because here's what the enemy does. He begins to explode it. He begins to expound upon it. And you begin to make a mountain out of a molehill. Let's just be real. We're very apt as humanity to do that. 
we'll say, well, they said that. And next thing you know, they meant that. And the next thing you know, they didn't really mean, they, they said it this way. And they said it with, man, you should have seen the look in their eye. And, and you, you just begin to over embellish it to make it worse than what it even really was. And if we continue to play it over and over in our minds and begin to tell other people, we have to quick, I want Jesus, quickly stop the enemy devices in prayer. Begin to pray. If you feel like you offended like what you said, sister, take it to the Lord first. Shut his mouth. Say, shut up, Satan. So what if they hurt my feelings a little bit? I'm a, I'm a grown person. Let's just talk to grown people. I understand children, but I'm a grown person. I can handle it. And if we don't get along, I can handle that too. Some people you just don't click with, and that's, that has nothing to do with offenses. You, we just don't always see eye to eye with. And, and the fact of the matter is, don't mean we can't work together. Don't mean we can't win people for the kingdom of God together. Don't mean we can't worship together. It don't mean we can't stand side by side and lift up holy hands and pray for each other. Because if you can't do that, then you got a problem. If you got hatred in your heart, you have a serious problem. And I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but I don't know who this is for. But if you're allowing hatred and bitterness to rise up in your heart, you have a very serious spiritual problem. Your soul could be in jeopardy because of the hatred. And you say, well, I don't really hate them. Well, you mark your words that you're saying and you mark the words that you're thinking about those people and see really how much you really dislike or hate or have bitterness. And then that grows in you. And when that begins to grow then the devil's got you. I'm just saying the devil laid the trap. You ate the, you ate the peanut butter off the trap and smack, he done got you. I don't know how else to say it. I don't know if y'all use peanut butter. We use peanut butter. I use tuna, really. Tuna's the best thing for mice. Did you know that? I did not know I that. had a bug man, an exterminator. I tried to catch one one time in the house. I put peanut butter. I put ham. I put cheese. He said, just take a little bit of uh, tuna juice and pour on there. He said, you'll get him. Sure enough, I caught him just like that. Anyway, that's just a little fun. But you become the mouse. You become snapped up in the trap. Well, it, it, you know, we, we use that a, a, as a good analogy. But have you ever thought about this? That it's not just a trap, but you put yourself in. in, in, in and the guy that wrote this book, he, he put it really well. You're in a prison that you created mm -hmm. for yourself. Because until this is taken care of, your mind cannot get back to the Word. Your mind cannot get back to, to studying and, and doing what you need to do in your ministry. You're in a prison. Right. You cannot get away from it and you cannot get back to God because you're, you're constantly thinking, I can't get back to my parking spot. I can't get back to my seat. I cannot get back to, to, to preaching, teaching. I cannot do anything but sit there and ponder and worry and argue with myself about who did me wrong. You're in a prison. You're, you're captive because of what this person has done to you or what you've done to this person. Because you, until you work this out, you, you really can't focus and, and figure out whether you have done something wrong or that person has done you wrong because in your mind, only that person is in the wrong. Nine times out of ten, that two-way street is both parties are in the wrong. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that'll preach right there, brother. Even if they are wrong and you're all right, you're still falling into a trap. And... and I, I want to read this one, one part right here because I cannot articulate the way he put it in. <coughs> they do not realize what they are spewing out bitter waters rather than pure. When a person is deceived, he believes he is in the right, even though he is not. not. No matter what the scenario is, we can divide all offended people into two major categories, those who have been treated unjustly and those who believe they have been treated unjustly. Let me, let me say that again. The two categories are those who have been treated unjustly and those who believe they have been treated unjustly. People in the second category believe with all their hearts that they have been wrong. Often their conclusions are drawn from inaccurate information or their information is inaccurate, but their conclusion is distorted. Either way, they hurt and their misunderstanding is darkened. They judge by assumption, appearance, and hearsay. Most of the time, whenever we have these things, it's a misunderstanding. Do you know most of the time whenever we get divorced is from misunderstanding 
I'm not saying whenever we go out outside of the home for those indiscretions, but whenever we cannot get along with our partners, it's from hearsay, it's from misunderstandings, and it's from things where God is not a part of making sure that our relationships are taken care of. Dr. Butler's on with us. Glad to have you on, brother. He said, let go and let God. He said, two wrongs don't make a right. Amen, brother. That's Amen. right. And that's the key. And sometimes we have a hard time of letting go. That's right. Let's just be serious. We have a hard time of letting go. They hurt my feelings, and I want somebody to know about it. Sometimes the only person that really needs to know about is God. That's right. God will take care of it. God will fix it. God will work it out. Let me, and it may not be in our time. And be, oh, help me. I... You know what we want? I posted this the other day because it kept coming to me. We are so quick as humanity to cast judgment and to cast execution on people for what they've said and what they've done. And when it comes to us, we want a lot of mercy and grace. And, I, and I, that hung up on me last week, and I think it may have been after we did this or maybe before, but I'm thinking, so true. I'm so ready to say, hey, they ought to pay the price for what they did. But if it was me... I'd be at the court saying, please forgive me. Please give me just one more chance, and I'll make it right. We got some, go ahead, brother. We got some things to follow. Well, uh, I, there's a couple of comments here, but I want to okay. jump down to the last one here because you see this word right here? And she mm. got it right here? Yeah. Read it on. Sissy, <laughs> you, you jumped ahead of us here. One of the biggest things that keeps anybody from forgiveness is pride. Mm -hmm. Sis, Sister Angie, you got it right on. Uh, good morning, Donnie. I, we, we appreciate you. We, we, uh, we prayed for you earlier. Uh, Darren King says the devil will tell you, you people talking about when people are talking about you, when they're not even talking about you. Mm -hmm. Amen, brother. Uh, that's how the devil fights you and play mind games uh, with you. Ha have to take it to the Lord and pray. And uh, you have to uh, stay prayed up. Amen, brother. Hey, the devil, let's, you know, you're right there, brother. The devil really does that a lot. I've had people come to me, well, they're looking at me, and I believe they're talking about me. Well, that's good right. Lord, you don't know if they're talking about it. That's That's a ploy of the enemy. And if they are, so be it. Somebody, I went by the other day, they said, we're just talking about you. I said, you must have run out of something to talk about. You come down to me, it's a low bottom of the barrel, you know what I'm saying? But the fact of the matter is, if you understand that, it is a trick of the enemy that, that puts a ploy in there that people are speaking about them. But go ahead about Sister Angie, what she posted. And uh, Sister Angie says, sometimes it comes down to pride. Someone that never accepts being wrong, they look at kindness as weakness. Woo. Um, there you go. And she stepped one, one step ahead of us, and I'm so proud of that. Uh, uh, you know, well, we, we, pride is a big issue. Be it is because it's me and I and, and it's and it's in our own selves that they hurt me because it's me and, and it's a pride thing to let go sometimes it's a pride thing thinking they deserve what they get they deserve the punishment That's right. and I ought to be vindicated is that a right word vindicated for what they did to me but here's here's goes back to that thing and that's where pride is is that we're ready to cast the judgment we're ready to cast the execution we're ready to snap it down on them Really and truthfully, what we're falling into, we're falling into that trap of pride, which caused the whole humanity to fall just about it. It's the pride of life. Come on. It's pride. Our pastor said it before, and I always like to use it. He said, the Lord ain't out to hurt your pride. He's out to kill it. Pride is what got the devil thrown out of heaven. Come on now. Yeah. He's I'm going to be like the most high God. And it was pride, and a third of the angels went with him, were cast down, and and we understand that, but it's pride that drives man. It's uh, In the Garden of Eden, it was lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Pride will drive you in a long way and keep you going because you think that you, you, you think that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it's not that, you're, that you deserve it, but you think they ought to be punished for it or they ought to be, they shouldn't hurt my feelings. You, you really get hurt because of your pride. Our pride gets hurt a lot more than really what happens in life. And it's because they shouldn't have talked to me that way. I'm a man or I'm a woman or I'm a man of God or I'm a woman of God and I'm a, 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 a whatever. And they shouldn't have talked about me that way and pride sneaks up on me. And, right. and here's, here's the way some of it works too. You, you got these people that walk up and go, man, I can't believe they did that to you. Or mm. are you hurt? Yeah. Or you take it upon yourself. No, no, I, I'm okay. Uh, 
no, don't worry about me. I, I'll, I'll be all right. And then you walk off, you sulk. You, you soil up. And mm -hmm. you do this all to yourself. You, you, and, and you can't bring yourself to do this in front of people and your anger and, and, and your, your inner emotions start welling up and you can't handle it. And the devil starts working on you. And instead of getting into your word and letting God and Jesus Christ well in your heart, the devil starts working on you. And instead of fixing the problem, you start working on your problem yourself. And God is trying to tell you, don't do that. And whenever you start doing that, you can't forgive. And forgiveness takes away that pride. Pride causes you to, to view yourself, I think the book says, as, 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 as a victim. That's right. And, and whenever you start seeing yourself as a victim, that, that part of you will start seeing more anger. And whenever you start seeing yourself as angry, and, and that objective will start looking at the person that you think did you wrong as an enemy. And the first thing you start doing is, man, I can't stand... Philip, he's, he's just always talking about me and where I'm from, and he, he's, he's just not any good. Hey, hey come over here. Let's, let me tell you what he did. The gossip starts, the picket fence line starts, and you'll start lining people up to be against the person that's actually helping everybody else because of a misunderstanding, and you'll start hearsay, and that's not good. You're dividing people that don't need to be divided. I like what he said there. Pride does cause you to view yourself as a victim. When you begin to view yourself as a victim, I like what he wrote here. Your attitude becomes, I was mistreated and misjudged, therefore I'm justified in my behavior. That's where we fail. And, and Sister Missy wrote a good thing here. It said, amen. The Bible in Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 says, lest Satan get an advantage over us. That's what he's doing. We are not ignorant of his devices. We've got to pray to be alert for his devices. And his, and, the, and his devices to cause division. But pride does. It, it's, it, it, it makes us become the victim. And once we become the victim, I'm the hurt one. I'm the one that's wronged. I've been the one that's been done wrong. And I shouldn't have to forgive. And I shouldn't have to. We, we almost get to the point of, of that we, I like what it wrote here. I, I've been mistreated. I've been misjudged. Therefore, I'm justified. Justified not shaking your hand on Sunday morning because you made me mad. Come on now. <laughs> let's be real. <laughs> I'm, I'm too old not to be real. Let's be real. I turned my back and walked away from you because I feel justified and you wronged me. And if I don't see some repercussions from you, then I'm going to stay justified and I'm going to stay hurt. Here's, oh, help me. Now, Jerry may get on my side and say, you're right. They shouldn't have done you that way. They shouldn't talk to you that way. You got every right to be mad. You better stay away from them people. If they don't teach you how to forgive and they don't say, hey, you got to forgive, you got something, go ahead. Yeah, Angie says it can be very difficult dealing with very prideful people. It can cause you to want to take a detour around the trap. Oh, oh, that's good, sissy. That's true. Uh, around the trap, and it will send us in a different direction than where we need to be going. That's how a lot of times we end up leaving church a ministry, or even the household at times. Oh, wow. wow, that's good stuff. That's there. good. Yes, ma'am. A lot of times whenever we, we are prideful, we don't go and we don't talk to our pastor whenever we need to to handle a situation that is so minuscule that you know 10 minutes worth of conversation will take care of two months worth of hurt. 10 minutes worth of conversation would have cured that would have made people leave the church. Let, let, let me say this. A lot of times, we're thinking about leaving the church that God put us in to help repair. Because the person that we're there to help fix hurt our feelings. And we're going to some other church trying to help fix it when God put us where we're supposed to be at because our feelings is hurt. God put us in a plan that he laid out 
And if you're trying to disobey God's plans, watch out. There you go. There you go. And, and you know, and a lot of it is once we feel justified, then we feel like we shouldn't have to forgive. That's right. And that becomes a big thing in our pridefulness. And pride is a, my goodness. And, and you're right, Sister Angie, if we're not careful, we get, we get driven away because of the whispers of the enemy in our ear. We get driven away by, by even if somebody has wronged you in a sense, and I ain't saying people don't get hurt. And I ain't saying people don't get offended in itself. But we've got to understand that that's a trap of the enemy, especially in the house of God, to cause division and to cause strife and to, and, and to enable you from doing what God wants you to do and what God's called you to do. And I want you to understand something this morning is, is you, I know you all are looking at us thinking, well, y'all never been hurt and you never had to deal with it. Yes, we have. Oh. <laughs> yes, we have. Don't, I'm, we're human. We're going to take it. But we, as, as you begin to mature in Christ, then you begin to grow and you begin to understand things and, and you begin to look at things in a different light. And if we're not careful, that pride, hey, it happens in marriages. Let's be real. We hurt each other sometimes in marriages and we offend each other. Some, we can... We can push the buttons sometimes, amen? You, you know, we, we don't do it deliberately, but sometimes we do. And, and, and if we're not easily, we become easily offended. We get that pride in our heart saying, hey, I'm a man. She shouldn't talk to me like that. Come on. That's and right. a woman does the same thing. Well, I'm a woman, and he shouldn't treat me like that, or he shouldn't roll his eyes at me like that, or he shouldn't say this to me like that, and he ought to treat me better than that. And, 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 and if we're not careful, we've got people on the outside agreeing with us. And that causes a division in the marriage. But it's a prideful thing. If we're not careful, it's pride. Think about Christ. I, I just thought about him. If anybody had a right to be prideful, let's just be real. He's God <laughs> all by himself. That's right. But it said he humbled himself and became a man. And he humbled himself at the cross. If anybody had a right hanging on there, dying and bleeding, and he had the right to say, hey, Lord, just kill them all. We'll sort them out later. Come on. If anybody had a right to be offended, and you think, well, he's God, he come to do that. Yeah, and we're to be Christ. Help me. That's right. Like. And that pride will rise up in us. And every, we, people do it at work. People leave good jobs because they said they shouldn't have treated me like that. And they shouldn't have talked to me like that. And he shouldn't have done that or she or how, whoever your boss is. And, and I know sometimes we get some terrible bosses. Don't get me wrong about that. But we get to that point and we're driven out because we allow pride to rear its ugly head. And I ain't saying you'd be a doormat, ladies. Don't get me wrong. It's not, I'm not talking about physical and, and, and mental abuse and emotional abuse. This is different. That, that's a whole different category. But there's some things that are just, we, we become easily offended in marriages that we reach a point now that we get divorced over irreconcilable differences. Come on now. We just couldn't get along. And a lot of that has to do with pride. We couldn't get along. A lot of that has to do with pride. He, he, he left his shoes at the door way too many times. He wouldn't put the toothpaste lid back on. He wouldn't put the lid down on the toilet. It, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine, but it's a prideful thing in itself, and, and we do it in the church world. We get hung up. Sister so-and-so wouldn't shake my hand. Sister so-and-so said this to me. Sister so-and-so did this to me. Brother so-and-so... Wouldn't even, wouldn't even acknowledge, he, he rolled his eyes at me. He wasn't even looking at you. You just thought it, and it was a trap of the enemy. The pastor would not even come by and shake my hand. The pastor would not return my phone call when I expected him to. I better hush before Jerry gets in trouble. How, how many times do you go to that church to see those people? You go to a church to get into the presence of the Lord. You go to that church to praise and worship and make sure that you are getting everything that you can get to reach the Almighty. It's not the people that get you there, but you do all that you can do to help them get there. If they offend you, try to work it out and pray that you can work it out. But it's not the people that get you there, it's you that get you there. Go ahead. Yeah, let's go ahead. I, I brought this up right mm -hmm. here. Um, I, if I miss anything here, help me out here, but I, I love this. In, in the book of Revelation, Jesus addressed the, the church of, 
Laodicea by first telling them how they saw themselves as rich, wealthy, having the need for nothing uh, by exposing their true conditions of being wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Now, this is in, in Revelation 3, 14 through 20. Um, they had mistaken their financial strength by spiritual strength. Pride hid their true conditions. Pride is... is is something that you sometimes you can be prideful of, of your kids. You know, I, I'm I'm proud of uh, of mm-hmm. what my kids are. But whenever you take pride and you move it into your life to take control of where you should be going, there is a problem. But many are this way today of the way Jesus described that church. They they do not see their true conditions <coughs> of their hearts. And they're unable to see the resentment uh, that they have for one another or the resentments that they have of how they should be in church compared to the way the church really is. Because they put themselves in a situation in the church that they feel that they should be treated compared to the way that they are treated. Everyone in that church is a member of God's church. I like what what this little book says. And a lot of times we don't see the true condition of our heart. That's right. Because of our pride, we've hit our conditions. I can handle it. And I think I got it under control. And a lot of times we feel like we do. Not only does pride cause you to be justified, but pride also can set it up to say, hey, I didn't got past that. I'm over that. And I'm moving on when you really haven't. We, we carry a resentment toward people. You say, well, I don't hate them, but you resent them. And if you ain't careful, resentment builds into hate. Excuse me. And hate builds into bitterness. And you almost convince yourself sometimes that I ain't been hurt by that. And I think that's important because we some people are just openly expressive about how they're hurt. And some people push it down and bury it and hide it back. And a lot of times they feel like, well, I've got past that. I've got over that. I had a lady one time come to me in, 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 her, in church, and she said something that really stuck with me a long time. And she shared a testimony. She said, you know, I thought I'd forgiven those people, and I thought I'd got past that hurt, and I thought I'd done moved on. She said, but every time I would see them, I noticed that there was something rise up inside of me. And I, you know, and I couldn't, and, and it was just... <clears throat> Excuse me, and she said, "I one day she said I was she'd come to church and Lord was moving on her and she was growing, maturing spiritually, and the next thing and she told me she said it was like all of a sudden the Lord showed me I had really not forgiven those people. Oh, I dealt with it and I'd held it back and I kept it down and I thought I was moving on, but I still had that resentment and things towards those people. And she said I began to pray for those people." And I begin to pray and God begin to deliver me. And now I'm set free from that. What you do when you buy into that trap, you become captive to that offense. You become captive to the enemy because he's holding you in the cell that's keeping you bound up. He's got a bars around you that you've built yourself. You lay brick by brick, bar by bar through your resentment, through your hatred, to your vision of what those people have done to you. And you're stuck in a trap. And even though you feel like you've over, went past that, Maybe you've moved on. Maybe you made the wrong decision and went to another church. Maybe you made the wrong decision and got out of church and you feel like you got over that. But the fact of the matter is, every time you hear that person's name, every time you see that, you want to run and say they did this and they did that. Or maybe you, just to yourself, it runs, plays back over. Like Sister Missy says, it plays over and over and over in your mind. And you have really not dealt with the true issue in your heart. And sometimes we have to learn to do that. Pride can be twofold. Pride can say I'm justified in how I believe, and pride can also keep us in a point to where we don't we think we've dealt with it. Or we're not hurt by it, but really and truthfully we are. And then it builds and it builds and it builds, and sometimes you're trapped in a prison you didn't even know you were in. Reminds me of the frog. Y'all heard the story about the frog that you can cook a frog on a stove as long as you put him in water and just turn it up a degree every so many hours and he'll stay in there and he'll get used to the warm, used to the warm until he's cooked to death. And that's what happens to us. We allow the enemy and his devices to keep us in that little prison. He's turning up the heat, turning up the heat, turning up the heat until you don't realize it and you're stuck. Misty posted something. If you had something. As she said, uh, the Lord wants us to cast all of our cares over to him because he cares for us. Mm -hmm. Amen.
That's right. That is right. Um, that that right there is something we we ought to go over sometime. Buying, buying God's gold. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a little lengthy, but it it's something good to. Right, loving that. Yeah, we're almost out of time, so okay. we'll, we'll go over that. that. Right. But you know, here here we are, and Jerry was talking about Laodicea, and and a lot of times they did not see what they were lacking. They did not see where they really were. Being justified sometimes and having hatred and resentment, and we just use resentment because maybe it's not full hatred yet. And bitterness sticks us in a place in, in that we don't even realize it. And that's what the Laodicea is. That's what he's telling in the Revelation. He says, you think you're rich. You got all you want. He says, but matter of fact, you're really, you're just wretched, you're naked, you're poor. And he's talking spiritual. And this, in itself, physically, they had everything. But spiritually, they did not. And if we're not careful as Christians, can I tell you this? This is my thought, and you may disagree with me, and that's okay. But if people are so easily offended and cannot forgive a lot of times, it really shows where they are spiritually. That's right. I'm just saying, it shows where their spiritual level of maturity really is. <clears throat> and that's my opinion, and some people will say, well, that's not true. I've been in church all my life, blah, blah, blah. Well, I know people have been in church all their life, and they're about, 20, they're about 12 years old spiritually. I don't have nothing to do with anything. But it really shows if you don't have the ability to forgive and allow God to work that out of your heart, then it really, and it's a growing process sometimes. Sometimes God, these, these offensives comes, but it's a growing process. If we'll learn to forgive and we learn to, to truly forgive, and like Dr. Butler said, let, God, let go and let God. When we learn to do that, then it really shows where our level of spiritual maturity is. I'm just saying, that's my thought, because it really, to me, I, I've been in this for a little while, Probably not as long as some, but when I see people who overreact over some things or they react to things that are really justified and they can't get past that hurt and they can't get past that point to where they can forgive, then it really shows where their spiritual maturity level is at. And that's, I don't know how else to say that, but it's pride sometimes. Pride will drive your soul to a devil's hell. I can't help it. I'm stuck on pride this morning. I like that because pride is the biggest issue in our lives. I'm justified in what it is. I'm prideful sometimes because I felt like I took care of it, but I didn't do like Sister Missy says, cast all my cares on him. God, you take care of them people. I say it all the time. You can't change people's hearts. Only God yeah. can. You cannot, what's the word I'm looking for? You cannot legislate people's heart. You cannot punish people enough to change their heart physically. It don't happen. If that was true, all the Christians would become, would, would denounce Christ through the punishments and prisons in Islamic states and communist states. They would just give up on God if you physically could punish people. But the only thing that changes people is, is heart, is God. And if we, and here's, let me say this. Sometimes, this just hit me. You're standing there on the right side of the law, justified in the way you feel. And if you can't forgive those people, then you may be hindering them, hindering God's work through them to change them. Because you feel justified and you want the law on your side. But what happens if you give them mercy and grace? And what happens then? What, we're allowing God to do what he needs to do. And we're stopping him from getting there because we're justified and we want to we punish him. Think about it. It's just a thought. Go ahead. You got any closing comments? I, I do. You know, I, this is the second week of this. Whenever, whenever I come up with this last week, that, that I wanted to cover this, you know, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm expanding on what you just said. Go ahead. When I come up with this two weeks ago, you know, I, I had the idea of, of covering this because I went so many years, over a decade of, of harboring, you know, anger, hurt, uh, the obsession of thinking that I was in the right. And, and, and it did not matter whether I was right, wrong, indifferent, uh, justified, or anything else in my life uh, about you know, being mad at somebody. But it kept me from my salvation. Because whenever you really think about being angry, if I'm anger, angry at him about anything, whenever I go up to, to have my judgment, 
if I have the, uh, uh, that, that one little thing against me and I'm angry and holding resentment against this man without love in my heart, God's going to ask me why I did not make it right because you cannot have that anger and that hate and, and, and everything against him because I didn't make it right. And I had that opportunity. When I, when I talked to him about doing this whole thing two weeks ago, I, I, I laid it all out there for him and I said, this is, this is on my mind because there's got to be other people out there that has got resentment and, 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 and anger with other people out there that either inside the church or in their family or against people that work at the grocery store, the gas stations, or, or, or people that they were driving down the road and uh, road rage or, or whatever that has got to have these same feelings that I, I, I held on to for so many years. And we've got to talk about this because this is the most important thing that keeps people out of heaven. And that's the ability to say, I forgive them, I forgive myself, and I need forgiveness from the Lord because I cannot get into heaven and have this in my heart. And I think it's important. All right. Sister Angie posted, sometimes we will move so we don't have so we don't have to hang on to bitterness, pray for that person, forgive, but move on. Sometimes that's true, but you got to be very, very careful, especially in the church world, and make sure that you're not moving just because. Yeah. God has to be the one to move us. And if we don't, if we move ourselves out of that situation, then we're moving our, we're not allowing God to do his work. Does that make sense? And I know what you're talking about. Some, and I'm not, let, let me, I'm trying to reiterate this. I'm not talking about re marriage relationships where there's, where there's abuse, physical, emotional, mental, and sometimes relationship issues in itself outside the church world. But the thing about it is sometimes you can't, you got to be careful when you move from church to church because what you're doing is you're allowing the enemy to move you. That's right. Even if it's through bitterness, even if it's through hatred, even if it's through anger. Now, sometimes you may have to move out of that ministry area or whatever you're doing for a moment and still stay in the house of God and still worship but here I want to say this, because if you move, then you really better make sure it's God that's moving you. That's the key. I'm, t I'm talking about church world. I you may be talking about a different situation there. But in church world, you've got, to, you've got to allow God to do his work in you. Come on, in us. Because he's trying to teach us something. Through, if we fell to the trap. Bam, we're in the trap. We're caught in the prison. I think about Jonah. He's in the belly of the whale. God's teaching him something three days in that stinking whale's belly. Come out a whole different man when he come out of there. Even though he was, should have been, he was justified for not going. Let's be right. Let's be real. Jonah, if anybody, and I'm bouncing back and forth. We're trying to wrap this up. But Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh for a right reason. That was their enemy. Truly their enemy. They were cruel and vicious people towards towards the Jews, and he was thinking, Lord, you surely can't have mercy and grace on those people. I'm not going to go tell them about your mercy and grace. I'm not telling them about your goodness, because he said, I know. You read the whole book, basically he says, he said, I know you'll forgive them if they ask, and I don't want them forgiven. I want you to take them out. But after three days in the belly of the whale, Jonah's mind began to change, and God began to change him. And he went in and he preached the gospel to them. But the, the point I'm trying to get to is here, and I understand what you're saying there, and, and sometimes in workplaces and sometimes in things like that. But I want to say this about church world. You've got to be very, very careful. If God is not moving you, you cannot allow bitterness to move you or the, or the intent of bitterness or resentment or hatred towards somebody else. Because if you do that, then you fail to that trap and you'll be in that prison forever. Because you moved and God, and maybe you'll upset the whole thing. People have left church over simple things and people have left church over serious hurts and I know that. And let me say this, if you, if you start running now, you'll never stop. The next church you go to and you get hurt, you'll be gone quicker than you did the last one. That's right. If you leave church that hurts you right now, you'll be gone. Once you start running, you'll never stop. It becomes a pattern. It becomes 
quicker and easier to do. I was I told Jerry of an old joke. It talked about a guy that was on a deserted island, and they, he'd been there for 20, or 20 years or so, and they finally find him. And he's showing them around what he first, the first little place he built to live in, and the second little place, the third place. And he's taking them a tour of the island. He said, this is where I, I fish, and this is the boat I made, or, or not the boat, but this is where I fish, and this is the houses I made as I was here, and this is this building and that building. And there was two buildings up on a hill not far from each other, and one of the guys said, what's that building up there? He said, oh, that's the church I built and I go to. He said, what's that over there? He said, that's the church I, I, the first church I went to until they hurt my feelings. He's the only one on the island. So he built him another church, and what it represents is, is that it's easily to move. And what, if you, because you, you, you got to allow God to get you out of the trap where you're at. I'm just saying that. You've got to get out of the trap and allow God to work in you through forgiveness and through all that to get you out of the trap you're at. Because if you start moving and you start running from church to church, you'll be running all the time until you stand in the sand and say, God, you help me forgive them and you help me to overcome this and you show me how to forgive them and pray for them like Sister Misty put in there and shut that mouth of that enemy up and say, I'm not listening to this garbage no more. So what if they're prideful? So what if they're arrogant? So what if they hurt my feelings? So what if they do this? So what if they do that? I'm going to forgive because God told Peter this. He said, you forgive them 70 times 70 in a day. That's 490 times a day you're to forgive those people. That's right. A day. Read your Bible. I'm getting in some deep water here. Help me get out of here, Jerry. <laughs> let, let, let me add this to it. I... We, we missed one point, brother, and I want to put it out there. The offense is not, not what's so dangerous. Right. It's when you pick up the offense out of the trap. That is what is so dangerous. So if you're really, really strong and you can fall into the trap and then get out of it without picking up the offense, then you're okay. I want to make sure that everybody is aware of that because you can fall into the, the trap of being talked about you can fall into the trap of, of of somebody being mean to you but if you don't ever get offended you can walk through it and be okay i hope everybody understands that because if you have a godly heart i just popped everybody with pack smack yeah so if if you can if you can go through the church and have everybody point at you and make fun of you like he does me and and not have a problem with it, then you're not going to fall into the trap and pick up that offense and carry it through the church and have a problem. The problem is, is whenever you pick up the offense, and, and, and let me read this to you, when you become offended, offended people produce much fruit, such as hurt, anger, outrage, jealousy, resentment, strife, bitterness, hatred, and envy. Some of the consequences of picking it up of the offense are insults, attacks, wounded, division, separations, broken relationships, betrayal, and backsliding. Those things will happen. But if you're strong with God, have Jesus residing in your heart, you can walk through this offense and never pick it up. And that's what we pray for. We, like what Stephanie said, Stephanie Mills said, how many times has God given, been right, but still forgiven us, treated us with love, cared, even when we think or know we are right, what God does, it, it do, if it's hindering us, keeping us from what God has in store for us. Amen. Amen. And Jessica wrote, with some people you just forgive and love them at a distance, especially if they hinder your walk with the Lord. That's true. Sometimes, I mean, and it means you got to be buddy-buddy. That's right. Sister Angie posted, I ain't leaving the church until God moves me himself. Amen. She said, I did that once and it took me, it took from me, it almost killed me literally. The devil, the devil tried to put me in the grave, but he failed. Amen, sister. And you're right. See, she, and I know you weren't really talking about that, but it brought out a good point in itself. And, 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 and she, she testifies. She tried that and, and it almost killed her literally. The devil tried to take her out. And that's what he does spiritually. And, and, and this is such a, a good topic, and it's such a sensitive topic. And it's such an important topic because we all have been hurt. Let's be real. We all have been hurt, especially in church world. And, and, and even in our own walk with God or even in our relationships with marriage and family and friends and things, 
we have to learn to overcome these offenses to be what God wants us to be and to fulfill what God wants us to do. And, and I know some people think, well, I'm, just, I'm still justified in all my thing, and you can be justified all you want. But the fact of the matter is, until you give it over to God, and I know we're trying to wrap this up, and we got a good little section to cover next week, and, uh, and it's uh, Christ gives an instruction to break him free from the deception of our pridefulness and things of that nature, and we'll, we'll talk about it. It's Revelations 3 and 18. We'll just give him a little thing. You can go look it up, and uh, we're going to get into that because God, if you allow God to work in your life, <clears throat> he'll change your heart towards people. He'll change your perception of things. He'll help you not to be so easily offended this morning. Uh, Sister, Sister Stephanie, have something? I ain't got yeah. my glasses. <laughs> oh, you can't see without your no. glasses? Bless it. <laughs> Stephanie said, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Electronics here. <laughs> she, uh, she likes a story about the little girl uh, who had fake pearls, and her daddy asked her if she loved him, give him her pearls, and he asked her, uh, different times over and over again until she cried, said, of course, Daddy, I love you. You can have my pearls. Uh, I lost. And he takes the fakes and gives her the real pearls. Yeah. We have to give the problems and what people do to, to us, the situation to God, in order to get what he has for us, in order for us to move on to better. That's right. We have to give the problem over to God. And I think that's the key right there. We want to fix it ourselves. We want to be justified in ourselves. And, and, and I think that's a great point because God has got something better in store for us if we'll do it and if we allow him. That's a good point. Amen. We still need to get her to come preach. She won't do it. Right. You can trial you all. If you get her, you do good. Yeah. You might could pay her. She just smiles whenever I I know her. it. Yeah. I know it. But hey, guys, we, we're going to jump back into this. Don't forget Revelation chapter 3, verse 18 will be our topic starting off next week. Amen. She's laughing now. Uh, <laughs> but I hope this has been informative. I hope this has been good. We're going to delve into more offenses and forgiveness and uh, how to deal with it, how God can help us through it. I think that's a big issue. we got to learn how to handle it. We first got to recognize, I broke that. First, got to recognize the attack of the enemy, <laughs> and then we've got to um, learn how to allow the Lord to work in our hearts to change us. Amen. Amen. It takes us. Come on, let's be real. The only thing unforgiveness does is hurt you, keeps you trapped in a prison. Whether those, a lot of there's some people out in this world. And I know we're talking church world, and we're getting, but there's people out in this world who don't really care if they hurt your feelings or not. Matter of fact, they're out to hurt your feelings. And you get trapped in that resentment, you get trapped in that bitterness, you get trapped in that hatred, then you're the one that's in the prison because they really don't care. That's right. Now, I ain't talking church world. I'm talking uh, the church world ought to be in the same, the, either way, but uh, I'm talking like at work. There's evil people in this world and they don't really care. But the fact of the matter is, in church world, it's a two-way street and the Lord will deal with them. You take care of, you, you help the Lord I told my grandson the other day he was doing something and I got on him and he said, well, they did this. I said, you take care of your business. I'll take, and, and we'll take care of their business. Same way with God. You, take, you let God take care of your business and God will take care of the people that may have offended you's business. Does that make yes. sense? And, and God, you, but you take care of you because you're the one that's going to pay the price for yourself. You're the one to be trapped in the prison. You'll be the one bound up. You'll be the one running forever and ever. That's right. I got to hush as we run out of time. Go ahead and close this up, brother. Hey, uh, real quick, don't forget service tonight, 7 o'clock. Uh, and we also want to, uh, to ask every single one of you that, uh, that's on here to uh, uh, just welcome all the ones that, uh, that that's their first time watching this morning. Uh, a special welcome to uh, Dr. Butler. And, uh, Brother York uh, was on there. Uh, again, uh, yeah, this is the second week in a row that... Uh, uh, Brother York uh, from mo over in uh, Rutledge. Pastors uh, of the Living Water yeah. Church of God. Appreciate you guys. Hey, we love you guys. We we love having uh, new members uh, watching. Uh, this is something that we uh, we feel strongly about uh, doing the online uh, Bible classes. Uh, but hey, if you have a need 
if you've got somebody that needs to be uh, uh, watching or enjoying the, uh, the Word of God, just put them in touch with us and let's get them on, on here to where we can get the Word to them. We love make, making somebody's day to get the, the, get the Word in their minds, in their hearts, in their hands, whatever we've got to do. Let's make sure that this, this uh, Bible class gets spread out there. Like, follow, whatever the Facebook thing is. Let's make sure that it happens. A hurting church for a, 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 a I mean, a hurting. <laughs> I can't I'm gonna let him stumble that. through that. <laughs> I'm waiting. Are you all guys yeah. waiting? No, don't do that to me. A healing, a church, healing for church for a hurting world. world. <laughs> I, I've said that so many times. I got it mess, messed up there. Uh, but we love you guys. We love what what uh, this is doing for uh, our community. Uh, let's just keep it going. Last time I checked, we got some people in uh, Southeast Asia to watch. Oh, praise uh, the Lord! So let's let's keep this going. Uh, it, I've still got it going in, in my uh, my ministry online. So let's let's keep reaching out there. God bless you. Uh, God bless each and every single one of the ones that's out there in uh, the other countries that's watching it. And uh, yeah, let's let's keep it going. Amen. 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 Don't forget, like you said, tonight's service. Um, make sure we didn't miss anybody. Um, be here, be square. That's it. <laughs> hey. I know that's old fashioned, but uh, anyway, I don't know what they say today. But I have no idea. Yeah, Jerry's too old. He don't know. <laughs> He's still back in the twilight zone there, or, or somewhere back there. But anyway. Same time, same place next week, guys. May Thank God you. may God bless you, and we will see you hopefully tonight at church. <laughs>